Never Stop Learning, week 248. We're going to take a quick look at the Gradient Tool Basics in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. All right, so the way you activate this tool is just hit the G key on your keyboard. Notice your cursor changes up, and over at the top, we have some new options available. All right, so the way this tool works is just click and drag. I'm going from left to right, and I'm also going to hold down the Shift key. That's going to help me keep things nice and straight, and then release my mouse. All right, so what's going on here is if you take a look over in the Tools panel, down at the bottom, you'll see that we have a black foreground with a white background. So what's actually happening is the start of my click is my foreground, and the end of my click is my background, and then we have this transition between the two. All right, so we have a longer transition here because I did a long click and drag. If I undo this by hitting Command-Z or Control-Z on a PC, all right, I'm going to do a short drag. Click and drag, release we have a shorter transition here. All right, so pick and choose which way you want to work with this. Over at the top, starting on the left, if you click on this, you have access to your presets. So we already have one over here at the top started off, but what you do is you set up the tool exactly how you want, then come in here, click on this icon, and that's going to create a new tool preset for you. Over here, this little gear wheel, this is where you manage your presets. All right, so I'm going to hit escape to get out of that. Now we have this preview of a gradient. If you click directly on it, it's going to bring up the gradient editor. I'm actually going to cover this in a future video. So for now, I'm going to hit cancel. All right, just to the right of that preview. If I click on that, it's going to give me this little flyout menu of different gradients that I could work with. So we already have some loaded here. You could also click on this gear wheel to find additional presets. I'm going to hit escape a couple times to get out of that. Now in this section here, this is where we're going to work with different modes. The default mode is going to be a linear gradient. All right, so I'm just going to click and drag, and this is the one you saw earlier. All right, just to the right, we have a radial gradient. When I click on that, this time I'm going to start in the center and drag out towards one of the edges, then release. All right, so as the name suggests, we have a radial gradient. What's really happening is we have the foreground and the center, and it's going towards the edges, which is our background. All right, next we have angle gradient. So I'm going to click on it to activate it. Click in the center, drag straight up, hold down the shift key to keep things nice and straight, then release. The reason I wanted to do that was I wanted to show you how we're starting here in the center, but notice we have our foreground over here on the right. It's going clockwise to our background. All right, so next, we're going to see Reflected Gradient. Click on it once to activate it. Now I'm going to start in the center. Click and drag towards the right, and release. So this one's similar to the Linear Gradient, the one we started off with in the beginning. All right, remember I clicked right here in the, in the center, drag towards the right, and it shows our foreground here going to our background. And then what Photoshop does is it's going to reflect that. That's why we have the white over here on this side. All right, now the last mode is going to be the diamond gradient. All right, so click on it to activate it. Click and drag, hold down the shift key, and release. All right, so we get this diamond gradient here. I'm going to undo that. Now, another thing I wanted to show you with the shift key is if you click and drag, it doesn't just have to be horizontal. You could also do at an angle and vertically. So if I do this at an angle and then release, then I get this awesome effect here. All right, I'm going to undo that. Real quick, I want to go through some keyboard shortcuts to help you play with these. Now, over here at the top left, if I click on this drop down menu, you're going to see all the different gradients that we talked about, right? Well, instead of coming over here, you could actually use the period key to cycle through those and the comma key. All right. And for the modes, you could use the left and right bracket keys. Notice I'm cycling through the different ones. When I reach the end, it'll bring me right back to the start. All right, now let's take a look at these blend modes. All right, by default, sets to normal. If I click on this, we have this drop down menu with all the different blend modes. All right, so for you folks that are used to working with blend modes, I'm gonna jump into this different document over here. All right, I already have an image and I'm on the background layer. I'm not gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna draw directly above this. All right, so let's switch the blend mode over to multiply. I'm gonna hit option shift M for multiply. It's gonna be alt shift M on a PC. All right, I want to go to a different gradient mode. So I'm going to hit the right bracket, and that's going to switch me over to a radial gradient. And over in the tools panel, down at the bottom, 
I want to swap those guys out. I want a white foreground with a black background. So I'm just going to hit the X key. All right, so over here in my document, I'm going to start in the center of my subject, click and drag towards the bottom right, all the way down to the edge of my document, and then release. All right, so now I'm left with this awesome effect. What's actually happening here is because I'm using the multiply blend mode, all those white pixels are now transparent, and we have this awesome transition towards black. And then that black is just giving us a nice shadow towards the edges so that we have our attention back on our subject. All right, I'm going to switch back to the other document. All right, in here, let's set things back to how they were. I'm going to hit the left bracket to bring me back to the original mode. And I'm going to hit the D key to give me the uh, default colors, which is a black foreground with a white background. All right, now over here, we still have our blend mode set to multiply. So if you want to know the keyboard shortcut for normal, just hit Option Shift N or Alt Shift N, and that'll bring you back to the normal blend mode. All right, next we have opacity. Uh, by default, we start off at 100%, so let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna click and drag, then release. Notice over here on the left, we have 100% uh, black. All right, so let's go back to normal. Now, I wanna go with 50% opacity, just so we get an idea of what's going on. So I'm gonna hit the number five key on my keyboard. That's gonna switch over to 50% opacity. All right, I'm gonna click and drag again, kinda roughly do the same gradient. Now this time our opacity is set to 50%, so we have less of our ink showing here. All right, so 50%, right? Now I'm gonna hit the zero key on my keyboard to bring the opacity back up to 100%. And when I click and drag this time, you see the opacity is back to its full strength. All right, cool. Just to the right of that, we have a couple more options. Now we have this one here, which is gonna reverse our gradient colors. Click on it once to activate it. Notice our preview looks different over here. All right, so I'm gonna start on the left, click and drag towards the right, and then release. Now what it's doing is it's showing our background at the beginning of the click, and if I come over here towards the end of the click, it's showing us our foreground. So it's the reverse of how it normally works. All right, so I'm gonna turn this feature off. Next we have this guy over here. This is gonna be dither. By default, it's already turned on for you. I'm actually gonna turn it off so you get a good idea of how this works. I'm gonna switch over to the radial gradient, and click in the center, drag outwards, and release. All right, I'm gonna start zooming in on this gradient. And as I zoom in, you could start seeing some banding here. Now, if you're not familiar with what banding is, you see these additional rings here or stair stepping that's happening from our transition between our foreground and background. All right, so this isn't really that appealing for most workflows. All right, so I'm gonna get out of here, undo that. And what I wanna do is turn this feature on. All right, it's already on for you guys by default, but let's see what the difference is. All right, I'm gonna create a new gradient, zoom in on that, and now we have this effect here. All right, so we're getting a better blend in here. So depending on your workflow, you might wanna have that uh, feature turned on or off. By default, dithering is already turned on for you. I tend to leave that on and turn it off when I need to. All right, so the last feature we have over here on the right this one's gonna be for your transparency in your gradients. All right, so I'm gonna turn this feature off. If I create a new gradient, you're not gonna really notice the difference, right? So let me undo that. I'm gonna come back over here, and what I wanna do is I wanna choose a gradient that has some transparency involved. All right, so I got this guy right here in the middle. This one's called uh, Neutral Density. Click on it to activate it, return or enter to just dismiss that little window. All right, remember, we have this feature turned off for transparency, so if I create a gradient, once I release, notice our document's gonna be flooded with ink. So we're telling Photoshop not to use any transparency in our gradient, and that's why you're not seeing any here. All right, so let's turn this feature back on, click and drag, and now we're getting the expected behavior of this gradient. All right, now to reset everything back to how it was by default, come over here towards the left, right click on it, and then choose Reset Tool. Click on it once and it brings everything back to how it was by default. I think that feature is really important because it's gonna allow you to play around and experiment with the different options that are available to you. And there you have it folks, that's the Gradient Tool Basics in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015.